Coming up in today's video, I tackle my first NAM miniature in Tiger Strike Camouflage. This tutorial will describe in details the steps in which I took to paint the Tiger Strike Camouflage and also a few other bits of his equipment. If you enjoy this video, please ensure you give the video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments what part you enjoyed the most. <laughs> All right guys, so it's officially my first NAM project. So I'm gonna be painting up some US Special Forces from Empress Miniatures. Uh, I'm gonna be painting these particular models in Tiger Stripe Camouflage, um, and also I'll be going through how I paint their webbing and a few other bits of their equipment. So to start off with, as I always do, I give my model a prime in Tamiya Surface Prime and Light Grey. And then for Tiger Stripe, I'm going to use German Camo Beige World War II for the initial base colour. So make sure you're giving this a really good shake um, just to make sure that we're getting the right colour. And then this is what we're trying to achieve. So picture a tiger, its pattern and put it on a shirt basically is the best way that I can try and describe it. So there's plenty of reference material out there. Obviously, um, I normally focus on World War II, so getting a really good reference material can be a little bit tricky, uh, but obviously the more modern the conflict, the more material that we're gonna get, especially in colored form. So I'm now gonna use black gray. Now this is gonna be for the black part of the tiger stripe camouflage. So I'm painting this in irregular lines that aren't joining as such. You can do the odd one that joins, but um, try and keep them irregular, spaced out nicely, because we're going to fill between the blacks with another color. Um, and just try and build it up. But you don't want to be going too mental with the black. Um, just give yourself uh, a little bit of room to work with. And if you need to go back, you can always go back. Um, so you can see here that I'm just trying to space them out nicely which is going to give me plenty of room to fill in the gaps between them. And then once I've got something that resembles that, I'm going to use retractive green. Now you're going to be telling me the Tiger Stripe camo scheme had green and brown. That is correct. But the brown was such a very light brown. It's just going to blow out. You're not going to make it out on this scale, in my opinion. So I'm using this green, retractive green, and I'm just filling in the areas between the blacks and I'm just adding just as you can see there just stroking the brush and just adding like fine boxes and little dash marks here and there just so we can fill the inner part with some substance you can see that it's starting to resemble the tiger stripe pattern um, and we haven't really done much this whole process is such a quick process too now I'm using a brown filter. This is completely optional. You can do your own filter. You don't even have to put on a filter um, because we're going to put a wash on afterwards. I just like the filter before the wash. Um, some people will put a filter on after a wash. Uh, some people won't use a filter. As I said, super optional. You really don't have to do this. If you don't want to make your own filter or you don't have access to a filter, that's fine. You really won't see much of a difference, but it's just something I wanted to include. Now for the webbing I'm using brown violet unfortunately with a lot of these uh, more uh, NAM focused um, US they were using a lot of drabs and a lot of greens so a lot of this is all going to be very green um, so it's going to be essential that we give it a good base coat but then we also give it a really good highlight so that highlight later on is going to make this equipment stand out otherwise if we don't give it the highlight we're just going to put on a layer of green on top of something that's already rather green or dark and it's just going to look a bit silly so if we can give it a good highlight and get the colors right it will look as realistic as we can do at this scale now they wore jungle boots uh, and part of that part of the jungle boot had like a built-in gator I'm, I'm assuming please correct me if I'm wrong so I'm using khaki for that um, and I'm just painting that part of the boot, which I'll show you now uh, in this color. Obviously it had a bit of the black leather going up the top, but I didn't bother with that. I just painted the whole, that whole area in khaki. So 
So little details like this really do help your figure pop. So take the time to paint them. Don't just paint them as a generic shoe color because they're there for a reason. And then, as I said, with the shoe, we're just going to be, or the jungle boot, sorry, we're just going to be painting it in German grey. Now, I'm not going to show you how I painted my, the rifle because it was all very similar to how I paint in my other videos. If you want to see how I do that and flesh, you can watch some of my other 28 mil, specifically the splinter tutorial, um, where I show you how to do that. Uh, this is just going to be focused on the uniform and webbing and a bit, various bits of his equipment. Now you can see that I'm giving it a big wash in null oil and I've gone to a one to one ratio with their Lathmian medium. I think it's just their thinners. <laughs> I probably haven't even pronounced that correctly. Who knows? It's just their thinners. So we go to a one to one ratio here. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of wash and filter. Um, so the wash is gonna go into the recess really nicely, but when it's on the flat surface, it's not gonna pull and leave a really black mark. So it's just gonna tone the uniform down just very minutely. Now we wanna go back over the Webbingham Rotsack in brown violet. The reason we're doing this is because now we're giving it a layer. We've given it its wash and it's gone rather dark. We're giving it a layer now, so we're gonna build that color back up. So we're using brown violet again, just to build it back up. And this is gonna create very subtle highlights and it's colors that aren't going to be super bright and look unrealistic it's just going to start building up nicely so obviously the next stage is a highlight but you'll see even with this initial layer it's really going to make it stand out a lot more than just leaving it with in its washed form and you might also be looking at this chap going why has he got a red bandana try and have a think about some of the nam movies that are out there uh, and who i might be basing this figure off you'll get an answer at the end of this tutorial so to highlight, I'm using brown, violet, and white, gray. Now you can use a white, you can use a, like a sandy color for this as well. You don't have to use white, gray, but I'm using it at a three to one ratio. That's really important for this when I'm using white, because if I go like a two to one or a one to one, it's super bright. You can see at this three to one ratio is already rather bright. So it stands out quite a bit, but that's okay. That's what I'm happy with. That's what I, I like. Um, so you can see that I'm picking out all the details, the so creases, the straps, um, and I'm just stroking on very slowly. The reason you do this is because if you go full metal and you put loads of paint on the tip of your brush, you're going to just ruin any of those nice darker areas that you want to leave in. So you can see where the strap is, you can see where some of the creases are, you can see where um, so there's a bit more equipment poking out the top because there's lots of creases. That's what you're trying to do. You're really trying to use this paint now to make this rucksack stand out. So it's not just a green blob on his back. So exactly the same principle with these jungle boots. I'm going over the gator part. I'm calling them gators. Please correct me if they're wrong. Um, and I'm going over it in khaki. Uh, just picking out the details. There's really not a whole lot you have to really worry about here because you can just pick out where uh, it separates. So you see the shoelaces and, and all the other fun stuff on there. I'm painting the shoelaces in khaki too. Uh, you could paint them in black, but you know, I think khaki would make, probably make them look better. Might be unrealistic, but I think khaki just makes it stand out just that little bit more than just painting it in the black. Now for the boots, exactly the same principle, going over them in German grey. Um, and when I base my models, I know some people go, they like to base them prior. Uh, I like to base my models uh, after I've painted it. The reason I do this is because I do a lot of dry brushing uh, when I put the earth down. And I use that dry brushing time to weather the boots, weather the bottoms of his trousers, maybe his knees, uh, anything like that. So it actually helps really nicely if you leave the base until the last, but it's personal preference. Now for the bits of equipment that have got buttons, they've got like some of the water bars I've noticed, they've got like a brass button. So I'm painting that in black. The reason I'm using black is because it's gonna help the next color stand out a lot more. Now you could use brass, um, but I think brass might not stand out as much as I'd like to, especially for something so small. So I'm going to go ahead and use gold. Now, gold is obviously going to be somewhat unrealistic, um, but I think it makes a really good brass substitute. It still has the shine and the brightness that I'm looking for. You could use brass. You don't even have to paint it. You could just use um, the highlight color from the webbing if you wanted to. But all these little extra details really help the figure to pop. So as I said, uh, if you want to know how I painted flesh, 
uh, and some of the other stuff like weapons and that. I've got plenty of other tutorials where I show that, specifically my 28mm splinter tutorial. Um, but we will see now who I've based this model on. So obviously my guy's missing a lot of the blood and the AK-47, but he's got the red bandana. So I'm going to go and say that I'm pretty happy that Chris Taylor from Platoon is now represented on my wargaming table. So I really hope you've enjoyed my first real dive into Vietnam. I've never really painted anything from the, the Vietnam War. So this is my first go straight into Tiger Stripe. I've got plenty more planned, specifically, obviously, uh, US basic uniforms. Um, uh, the Viet Cong, uh, Anzacs, all of that stuff. So stay tuned. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see. I haven't painted any of that yet. So obviously, um, whatever you guys prefer, I'll get straight on to. And I'd also like to take a moment to thank my Patreons. Your support is really appreciated. And they decided which video was going to be put forward first, which is the Tiger Stripe tutorial, um, followed by the Luftwaffe Field Blue Uniform. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. And for those that are existing members, thank you for your support and watching. All right, guys, that will end today and I will catch you at the next one. Bye.